It's already 2025 and the world of technology has not stopped moving. We are already seeing some really interesting developments in key categories, but in the spaces of consumer technology, in gaming, and in business workplace productivity, I think we're gonna see some really exciting things this year. And so while we've seen some hard renovations and some new categories emerge over the last couple of years, 2025 is poised to see them really start to dominate in some really interesting and unexpected ways. In this video, we're gonna take a look at them. So team, let's dive right in. So who's absolutely sick of the complete lack of hardware innovation? I know I am, I think every tablet and every phone and every laptop looks the same. I mean, we've even seen the re-rise of the foldables. I mean, for me personally, the Motorola Razr, the original, is the king of all foldables. And you can't argue with me otherwise. And if you want to, drop a comment. But let's be real, the only reason that the Fold phone is back is to sell the next hardware. Because it's really hard to explain how AI assistants and spec bumps are actually important to you. But I think this is the year that they're gonna really start to feel it. With Gemini coming a long way, and Apple Intelligence having to make its big leap this year with Siri, we're sure to see a new era of digital assistant. Google announced Gemini 2.0, and really, this is the next step in AI assistant revolution. It's multimodal, it's got amazing memory, which essentially allows it to interact with the world in real time and start to truly connect the dots across different applications, the world it sees through the camera, how you interact with it in multiple languages, and ultimately retain that memory and actually service and support your daily life. Certainly worth checking it out if you've not heard of it yet, but Project Astra and Project Mariner look incredibly promising for this stuff. I mean, to be honest, the specs are so powerful now on these phones that until we get to the next generation of silicon, which more on that later, we're gonna have to make do with system intelligence being the feature that sells. And while 2024 was the step in the right direction for major corporations like Google and like Apple, 2025 is gonna be the year that I think we really start to see these things accelerate in what they can do. It will be the primary driver of innovation because let's be honest, it's just gonna be another camera improvement as well. And for some reason, we also love those. Gamers have been blessed in the last three years with innovation of all sorts. We've got the innovation of the gaming handheld and the handheld PC, thanks to the ROG LIX that I have and I absolutely love. The likes of the Steam Deck still going strong with its OLED generation and new entrants like the MSI Claw AI Plus and the Legion Go. So 2025 in this area is gonna promise two things. The first is gonna be the second wave of chip innovation from AMD, Intel, and the rest. So the chips like the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, these have been great workhorses for the last couple of years, but the next wave of those is coming. Moore's law of continuous improvement states that everything will get more advanced. There'll be more transistors on a microchip every few years, and we are still seeing that growth. And thankfully, gamers are benefiting. And I don't suspect that the next wave of microchip is going to improve the graphical capabilities of these things. They're still really small devices, but what we're looking for is improvements in performance and effectiveness and efficiency. Handheld gamers will know that there's nothing like the stress of losing battery in that critical Baldur's Gate 3 dice roll. So this new generation of chip is likely to improve the ability for these devices to last a much longer time. Begs the question, is the gaming laptop dead? The second category is probably the most interesting, and it's something that has been around for a while, but I think it's gonna move from that nascent state where only a few people do it or can do it because of their internet connection to something that's gonna be much more mainstream, and that is cloud gaming. So with Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 coming to most modern devices and that global rate of internet speed increasing, we're nearing the promised land of true cloud gaming wherever you are. GeForce Now offers 4K gaming at 120 frames per second without any desktop. Okay, so that's all the toys. A lot of great toys, by the way. But what about the world of business? IBM this year are due to launch the world's most powerful quantum computer, and that is gonna have a huge impact on the landscape of computing, on everything you've heard about previously, and most importantly, the world of AI. But what is quantum computing and why should you care? You've got traditional computing. Traditional computing is all based on transistors. A transistor is either on or off. 
it is either a one or a zero, we call that binary code. And essentially, all images that you have on your computer, all code that is written, every model that is run, every image that is generated, every video that you watch, is a combination of ones and zeros. A quantum computer, though, can use the scientific principle of superposition, which essentially means that in a quantum state, both the transistor can be on and off at the same time. Both are true. That is what's happening in this quantum computing world. So why is that different and why should you care? Well, it means that now through these computers, we can calculate at previously unobtainable speeds. And when you layer that back up to the most important stuff, which is currently in the world of computing, which is AI, these models are being built, generated and tested. A computer can only do that at a specific speed. A quantum computer can do that at exponential rates of speed. It means that it could train machines incredibly quickly in a way that would take other com normal computers years or hundreds of years to do. A quantum computer could do that in seconds, which means that your AIs will get smarter. They can learn quicker. It means that we can process and create things at a blink of an eye in a way that we could never do before. It is a fundamental shift in how computing works. And it, it feels really hard to grasp what that could be because it, it's a bit like predicting Uber and Netflix when the iPhone came out. We didn't think that that technology would allow you to create this brand new ecosystem of digital companies. But I think with quantum computing changing the game, things like, I don't know, the ability for your AI to be genuinely intelligent, that is gonna change. It's gonna be truly, truly intelligent. Or at least it could calculate and connect dots that we could never previously be seen. It will discover things in healthcare, in transport, in education, and connects between societies that we have no idea. And it's gonna help governments shift. And for me, it's gonna make my AI assistant a lot smarter. Thanks, Siri, please take advantage of this. I mean, I've gone on a bit of a rant there, so, what do you think is going to be really interesting in your world? Look, I've touched upon the things that I'm interested in, so I'd love to know what you're interested in. And if you're new and you liked what you saw here today, please consider a subscribe. It really helps me grow this channel so I can bring more of this content to you as often as I possibly can.